the Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show. <laughs> Gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards to remind you that every time you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Yes, don't forget... A Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And here is our star, that lovable lady of stage, screen and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. of Lakeview and the home of the Bartons where Charlotte's been having what might be called an elevating experience, raising the money to raise the three Barton children. But now, although Charlotte doesn't know it, Barbara Barton has a scheme to augment the family income. On this particular afternoon, we find Charlotte with Jack in the living room as Bobby bursts through the door. Oh, boy, you did care outside today. Hey, Sprout, go easy on that door, will you? Yes, Robert, be a little more quiet, son. I'm sorry, Aunt Charlotte, I forgot. Jack's doing his arithmetic lesson. Arithmetic? That's kid stuff. This is algebra. I'm trying to find the missing quantity, X. Goodness, haven't they found that yet? They were looking for that when I went to school. <laughs> huh? I know where to find X. It comes right before Y. Oh, this is a different kind of X. Now, dry up, will you? <laughs> now, Jack, Robert is only trying to be helpful. Well, how can he be helpful? This problem is very intricate. You have to know algebra and geometry. What's geometry? It teaches you all the angles so you can go around in the best circles. Huh? <laughs> My dog Flash goes around in circles. Flash? Well, he does. Whenever he chases his tail. <laughs> One of these days, he's going to meet his end. <laughs> uh, I suppose Flash could help me with this problem, too. Or maybe his fleas could help. Well, fleas are very mathematical. Hmm? They add to his annoyance, subtract from his comfort, divide his attention, and multiply like everything. (laughs) I'm good at adding and subtracting, Aunt Charlotte. Are you, dear? Oh, yeah? Well, let's see you do this problem. Farmer A has ten head of cows, which is twice as many as Farmer B. How many head are there? One head to each cow. You see? You can't even do the simplest problem in the book. Now, let me show you how I do it. First, you let X stand for the cows. Then you let the cows stand for the farmer. Aunt Charlotte, the cows can't stand for the farmer. Well, they'd better. He's going to have an awful time milking them sitting down. <laughs> oh, a lot of help a man gets around this place. In our school, we don't figure with cows. We use apples. Much handier, and it doesn't take any points. No, oh, I give up. I'm going into the other room where I can concentrate. Wait, Jack. Maybe I can help you. What are you working on? Oh, you wouldn't understand it, Aunt Charlotte. What's a woman know about problems? Don't be ridiculous. If there weren't any women, there wouldn't be any problems. <laughs> oh, Aunt Charlotte, you're like all the rest of the women. When it comes to solving a real problem, you haven't got a leg to stand on. <laughs> I haven't got a leg to stand on? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, you asked for it. Now, here's the problem. It says a spherical life boy has an inside diameter of 36 inches. Compute the air pressure inside it. Does a life boy have the air in it? Well, sure. What do you think boys yup? Why, Robert, you know that. It's what I say to you and Jack in the morning. Boys yup. <laughs> oh, I should have known better than to expect any help. Goodbye. Oh, just a second, Jack. About that problem, if I remember correctly, the formula you want is 4 pi r squared times the air pressure per square inch. Huh? Hey, wait. Oh, that's right. Oh, gee, Aunt Charlotte, when you stop kidding, you're pretty hip. Well, let's see now. Or pi r square. Pi r square. That doesn't sound right. Hello, everybody. Oh, hiya, Bab. You don't say pi r square. I thought you were going to a class meeting after school, Barbara. Pi r square. I did, Aunt Charlotte. It's over. Well, it can't be as late as that. Well, look at that. It's five o'clock. Besides, pies aren't square. They're round. 
Robert, are you hinting that you'd like a pie for dinner? Oh, boy. Would you make one of those lemon ones, that short? And could I lick the ball? <laughs> Sometimes I think a boy is nothing but an appetite with a skin on it. <laughs> All right, come on, Robert. Let Jack figure out his pie, and we'll see about getting a pie into your figure. Oh, Jack, keep this quiet, but Senator Blair is going to appoint a secretary. And they feel being at hometown is going to pick somebody from right here. Isn't it wonderful? Well, what's wonderful about it? Well, just think of all the important and interesting people I'll meet in Washington. Officers and diplomats and, and everybody. Did you say your are meet? Yes, after I get the job. I just sent in my application day before yesterday. I wasn't going to tell anybody about it yet, but... Oh, Babs, get back on the beam. You haven't got a chance. I'd like to know why not. Well, the senator doesn't even know who you are. Now, if you'd left it to me, I could have fixed it for you. Oh, you. What could you do about it? Oh, not a thing. Just put it over for you, that's all. Oh, sure. How? Oh, I happen to have a few angles, but of course, if you're not interested... Oh, don't be so hinky. How? Well, look, did you ever stop to think that the dispatch always supports Senator Blair? Huh? And that Aunt Charlotte's friend, Mr. Anderson, has just been made managing editor? Oh! Sure. Just a word from Mr. Anderson and the job's yours. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I'll call him and... No, no, no. Now, let me take care of this, will you? Mr. Anderson and Judge Cronin are coming here for dinner tomorrow night. I'll talk to him. Why, well, you're as good as in Washington right now. All right, all right. But you don't need to shout at the top of your voice. Who's shouting? I'll keep it quiet. Did you get the answer, Jack? Well, how can I? I take it up with Mr. Anderson. What's Mr. Anderson got to do with your problem? Oh, oh, problem. Oh, I, I thought you, you said... You thought you said Washington. Oh, uh, oh. yeah, I, I've got to take it up with Washington. I mean, well, no, I, I mean, well, I, I've got two problems. Well, what is all this? Well, Aunt Charlotte, could you give me a little help with the next one? Well, probably very little help. What is it? Well, it says here, an object immersed in water displaces its own volume. Well, what happens when a person gets into a bathtub? Oh, that's easy. The doorbell rings. <laughs> I came here to see Barbara Borton. I'm Barbara Borton. Oh, you are? And do you happen to know who I am? Why, why I don't believe I do, but uh, won't you come in? My name is West. Miss West? Yes. And for your information, I've been doing Senator Blair's secretarial work here in Lakeview for the last seven years. And if you think... Barbara, I... if that's the judge and Mr. Anderson... Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were expecting a friend. I'm not a friend. My name is Reva West. I know my duty, and I came here to put Miss Barton in her place. My, you sound like a second lieutenant. <laughs> Barbara, what is all this? Well, Aunt Charlotte, I don't know what she's talking about. You certainly do. You wrote a letter to Senator Blair, didn't you? What letter, Barbara? Well, I nearly heard that Senator Blair was going to hire a secretary for his Washington office, and, and I sent in an application, that's all. That's enough, because that job is mine. I've been doing the senator's work here in Lakeview for years. And if anybody goes to Washington, it's going to be me. Well, I'm sure Barbara had no intention of trying to take your job. Just because she's, she's young and attractive, that isn't going to get her anywhere. But, Miss Webb... And that goes for you, too. Yes, I know. It never did get me anywhere. <laughs> I can picture Miss Barton in Washington. She'd be wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well. Some nerve. Even if I didn't want the job, I'd get it now. I'd get it for spite. Oh, now, dear, why get it for spite? After all, spite never did anything for you, nor anyone else. It's been a marvelous evening. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Anderson. And a most delightful dinner. Thank you, Judge. It's really quite an event when the bench loses the services of a jurist like you, Judge. So learned, so wise, and shall I say brilliant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pray do. <laughs> a long life to you in your legal practice. Oh, a long life. A long life. Uh, did you read about that invention to prolong the life of one's clothes? It's a device that tears trousers. But, Judge, what's the advantage of that? Well, if one's trousers are torn badly enough... He'll never wear them out. 
Uh, that was easy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, wait till you hear about my invention. Uh, what's that? Uh, a cedar line griddle to keep the moths out of the flannel kegs. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Before you cook the hot cakes, toss a handful of Mexican jumping beans into the batter. Mexican jumping beans? Yes, yeah, so the cakes will flop over by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very comical, too. Uh, only Miss Greenwood, they really wouldn't, you know. Oh, they well, wouldn't. They wouldn't, Jeff. I know. Uh, I tried uh, Charlotte. Uh, 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 I nearly forgot. Uh, Jack was talking to me this evening about that appointment for Barbara as Senator Blair's secretary. Oh, yes, I know. She wants it very badly. Why, only... you could be useful there, Anderson. Most well, certainly. The senator's here on a quick trip, and I'll phone him the first thing in the morning. No, Mr. Anderson. He... No? No, I don't want Barbara to get the job. But, Miss Greenwood, this is a splendid opportunity. I realize that, but there are very good reasons why Barbara shouldn't take it. Now, Charlotte, I think you're wrong. Indeed, yes. I rarely agree with Anderson, but this time I must make an exception. Barbara should have that job. Boys, you're both good friends. Oh? Uh-huh. I have the highest respect for the judgment of both of you. Oh? Uh-huh. Personally, I think you're both wonderful. Ah. Uh-huh. But neither one of you has ever been an aunt. Oh. Uh-huh. Good night, Mr. Anderson. You've always been so helpful. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, good night, Charlotte. And good night, Judge Cronin. You're always so sweet. <laughs> oh, good night, Miss Greenwood. Come back soon. Hey, Aunt Charlotte, did I fix it? Hmm? Fix what, Jack? Oh, gee whiz, did Mr. Anderson talk to you about that job for Barbara? Oh, that. Yes, yes, he said he could help her. Oh, I knew he could. I told Barbara it'd be a breeze. Only I'm not letting him. Not letting him? You mean Barbara isn't going to get the job? I don't think it's the best thing. Oh, but she's got to get that job. She's told everybody she's getting it, all the kids. Barbara ought to know by now when you make a prediction, there's only one thing you can predict right, that you'll probably be wrong. Oh, but Aunt Charlotte. I'm sorry, Jack. Barbara simply doesn't deserve the job. But why not? She's smart, she's got a good personality, and, well, well, she deserves it as much as anybody. No, Jack, not nearly as much as Miss West. Are you kidding? That zombie that came here and insulted Bab? I'll admit Miss West was rather disagreeable, but we have to be fair. Sure, be fair. But how about being fair to Barbara? I am, Jack. Well, you certainly show it in a funny way, taking sides against her, letting that West character have the laugh on her. You're going to have a tough time making Babs believe you're fair. I can only do what I believe is right, and if it turns out wrong, I'll admit it in all honesty. Honesty? What good's that going to do after Barbara's lost out? Don't give me that corny stuff that honesty is the best policy. Son, honesty is the only policy, and if that's corn, let's have more of it. For centuries, observing Easter has been an important tradition because Easter signifies new hope. It marks a new beginning. And this year, how worthwhile it will be if you, too, make a new beginning by getting in touch with all your loved ones, sending an Easter message, a card, especially to those who are away from home. You'll enjoy choosing your Easter cards at your Hallmark dealer, distinctive Hallmark Easter cards that say just what you want to say the way you want to say it. You'll find that lovely Easter message you had in mind for Mother or for Dad. You'll find special cards for each member of the family, and cute little cutouts for the youngsters. There are loving Easter thoughts for sweethearts and for dear ones overseas. And so many of us have friends who will value a beautiful religious card at Easter. Choose your Hallmark Easter cards this week while a wide selection is still available. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste your thoughtfulness. And now to resume our story. It's five o'clock of the following evening and in the living room of the Boston Home. Yes, who is it? Hey, me, Miss Greenwood. Come oh. here. Come in, Junior. I uh, bring you that list of stuff we need for the lunchroom, and uh, here's a letter for Barbara. Oh, thanks, Junior. I'll give it to her. Yeah. They say this fire feels good. Turned kind of cold again, and just when it looked like spring was coming. Mm-hmm. I guess even spring has to wait for a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I passed Barbara and Janet Gregory out there in the yard, and neither one of them wearing a coat. 
I declare, I don't see what keeps girls from freezing. Why, uh, Junior, you're not supposed to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you carve me, Miss Greenwood. You carve me. <laughs> oh, Junior, I wish I had your gift of repartee. Yeah. What's repartee? It's a clever comeback that tomorrow you wish you'd thought of today. <laughs> oh, you mean I can sort of flip a quip? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, being as how it's you, I'll let you in on the secret. Now, wait a second, I'll get out of my pocket here. Well, what is. is it? It's a book. The handy reference to 1,000 fascinating facts and witty wise saw so you can uh, be the life of the party and, and envy of your friends. Encyclopedia. <laughs> and you get your jokes out of that book? Yes, but you keep it under your hat. All you have to do is look up the word. I'll be glad to lend it to you. You would? Would. Wood. Wood. Here it is, page 79. The wood that's most in use is poplar. That's why it's a poplar. <laughs> oh. I always thought people made wood jokes right out of their own heads. <laughs> no, no, it's all here. <laughs> no, it's all here in the book, plain as day. Whip! Day. There's another one. Page 26, day. Why is a man's birthday never on the calendar? Because he usually takes the day off. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. <laughs> on a woman's birthday, she usually takes years off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Junior, you know, your book fascinates me. Fascinates. Oh, there's a dandy. Fascinate. Wait a minute now, page 31, fascinate. Yes, here it is. I've got nine buttons on the vest, but only fashion eight. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello, uh, Barbara. Here's a letter. Thank you. Mm. Uh, well, uh, I'd better be ankling along. Uh, here's the encyclopedia, Miss Dean, but don't say anything. I can positively assure you, Junior, it'll be a closed book. Uh, <laughs> well, good night, Miss Good night, Junior. <laughs> oh, that man. <laughs> Uh, here's a letter from Barbara. Not that you care, but it's from the senator. Turning down my application. But I do care, darling. I don't like to see you feel bad. How do you imagine I feel? I wanted that appointment more than I ever wanted anything. Naturally, I'd be disappointed. Barbara, there are two kinds of disappointment. Not getting what you want and getting it. And sometimes the last one is the worst. Oh, then I suppose it's wrong to have ambition. No, but ambition needs equipment to make it work. Equipment? Knowledge and training. Ambition is like lightning. With the right implements, it can be controlled and directed and made useful. Without them, it's only a brilliant flash of light that burns itself out. Yes, I know. We'd rather see Miss West get the job. Barbara, do you know anything about Miss West? No. I do. I took the trouble to find out. She's worked hard for that appointment, and all you've done is want it. Merely wanting something isn't enough. You've got to earn it. I'm not interested in Miss West. She's taken care of Senator Blair's office here in Lakeview for seven years. Oh, naturally. I'm not as smart as she is. Of course you are, but you're not as well trained. After, now, after you've finished high school... We needn't discuss it any longer. It's very plain you're on her side. Oh, but darling, I'm not. I'm on your side. I don't want to see you fail simply because you haven't... a proper experience. There are other ways of learning things besides experience. But not as thoroughly. A person will learn more in two minutes by actual contact with the business end of a bumblebee than any book could make him believe in two years. Maybe you feel like joking about it. I don't. <laughs> now, darling, it isn't as serious as all this. Come on now, let's forget it, shall we? And for all Mr. Anderson's influence, I doubt if the senator would have actually hired you. And Charlotte, Jack told me you said if you were wrong, you'd admit it. Mm-hmm. Well, you can admit it right now. Hmm? What do you mean, dear? Before I got this letter, this morning, in fact, I went to see Senator Barrett. And I'm starting to work for him tomorrow morning. <laughs> Senator Blair's office. This is his secretary, Miss Barton. The senator will be in this afternoon. I know he'll be glad to talk to you. Oh, dear. Senator Blair's office? Oh, yes, the Chamber of Commerce. I forgot you were waiting. Uh, yes, the senator will be able to speak at your Wednesday luncheon. Hello? Oh, long distance? Who? Uh, Mr. Oliver of the Federal Reserve Bank? I'll hold on. Hello, Barbara. Well, now, there's an unusual sight. A woman actually listening. I'm waiting for someone to come on the line. I'm about to have a discussion with the Federal Reserve Bank. Well, I've heard money talks, but the only thing it ever said to me is goodbye. <laughs> I'm waiting for Mr. Oliver, Aunt Charlotte. I didn't expect you to drop in. Child, a woman with my figure never drops in. She slides in and folds up. 
How are things? Very busy. I've handled some very important matters this morning. Oh, hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Oliver. Yes, I'm sure I can help you. Oh, when does the senator return to Washington? On Friday. Oh, is that all? Goodbye. Just the same, I have handled some important business this morning. I'm sure you have, darling. <laughs> oh, good morning. Is this uh, Senator Blair's new office? That's right. It'd be no offense, and I would like to see Senator Blair. Oh, the senator isn't in right now. Uh, what did you wish to see him about? Well, you see, last July, uh, my prize girls have been ran into by yeast. Uh, I beg your pardon? <laughs> I say last July, my years have been ran into by yeast. Uh, yeast? No, no, yeast. Yeast, yeast, I hear me. <laughs> Mr. Hanson's telling you, dear, that last July his Jersey cow was run into by a jeep. By Jiminy. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to see Senator Blaine. But the senator can't do anything about your cow. Haven't you any insurance, Mr. Hanson? Yeah, I have her insurance, but may yes, he was not burned. I have cyclone insurance, but may yes, he was not blown away. May yes, he Yes, I know, was run into by a yeep. I mean, jeep. <laughs> How about the uh, war risk insurance? Yeah, I have Mr. War... Hanson, Senator Blair is a very busy man. I don't think he'd have time to bother about your cow. Yeah, but... Uh, the, I'm the... sure you understand. Uh, yeah, I understand. Good morning, Mr. Hanson. Good morning. Well, that's that. You know, don't you, Aunt Charlotte, besides talking to important people, the efficient secretary always keeps out pets. Oh, she does? <laughs> Now, I wonder if that's why I never get in. <laughs> I can just imagine the senator bothering about some farmer's cow. Oh, you're back early, Senator. Yeah, only for a moment. Oh, Senator Blair, uh, my aunt, Charlotte Greenwood. Uh, she's from Hollywood. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, I'm happy to make your acquaintance. I've heard of you very often, Mrs. Greenwood. Thank you, Senator, but you haven't heard quite correctly. It oh. isn't Mrs. Greenwood, it's Miss Greenwood. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're sorry. <laughs> Uh, may I have Barbara long enough to take her to lunch? Why, I think that's going to be arranged. Uh, how did things go this morning, Miss Barton? Oh, it's been very busy, but I think you'll find that I've handled everything satisfactorily. I'm sure I will. Oh, uh, you didn't forget to send for that report on the new Lakeshore Highway. Oh, no, Senator Blair. Uh, here it is. Uh, good. Well, then, I think you deserve a lunch. Uh, uh, wait a moment. This isn't the report I wanted. Oh. Well, I asked for the Lakeshore Highway report. But did you specify report 169B, as I told you? Oh. oh this isn't correct. I want to be satisfied on the gradient and the banking. Uh, I'm satisfied for the highway to turn the same time I do. <laughs> I'm sorry to be annoyed, Miss Greenwood, but this is very important. But Senator, I was so busy, and I assumed that the Highway Commission... Your was job up... isn't to assume, it's to know. Well... All right, never mind, never mind. Go ahead and get your lunch. Well, it won't be very long, Senator. Oh, I almost forgot. There was a farmer here, a, a man named Olaf Hansen. Yeah? He wanted to see you about a cow. It was all so silly that I got rid of him. You... you did what? I told him you couldn't bother. He wasn't important. Uh, now, wait a minute, Barbara. To a senator, everybody in the United States is important. Ole Hansen is the head of the largest farm grange in this state. He's a very influential man, and you take it upon yourself to decide he isn't important. Eh? But it was about a cow. That's right. There was an accident on his farm last summer during army maneuvers. He has a claim against the government. Uh, Senator Blair, uh, Barbara simply made a mistake. That isn't so unusual. Anyone's likely to make a mistake. Exactly. That's why I need an efficient secretary to keep me from making mistakes. Oh, but I'm afraid this job hasn't worked out, Miss Barton. Uh, we just consider that you're through. Oh, you're only partly right, Senator. This job may be ended, but Barbara isn't through. She's only starting. Uh. Hello. Well, good evening, young man. This is the Barton residence, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is Miss Greenwood in? I'm Senator Blair. Gee, are you a real senator? Well, as real as they come. From Washington? That's right. Gosh, I never thought I'd see a senator. Well... But hey, why don't you wear your baseball suit? But, what? <laughs> Robert, who is it, dear? Oh, Senator Blair, come in. Oh, thank you. 
I think perhaps I should have asked for Miss Barton. Too. Uh, Robert, run into the living room and tell Barbara that's a dear. Barbara! I hey, rather Barbara. suspect I owe you an apology, Miss Greenwood, for losing my temper this morning. Oh, that's all right. I lose mine, too, but I don't worry about it. <laughs> Temper's one thing you can lose and still have. <laughs> oh. oh, good evening, Senator oh, Blair. Good evening. I, uh, I came here to thank you for the way you solved how, uh, Hanson's difficulty. He, he's quite pleased about it. Yeah. You mean about the yeep or rat jeep? Yes. Yes, you're reminding him that his war risk insurance took care of the whole affair. Oh, no, I didn't. That was Aunt Charlotte who thought oh, of that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Lots of people have paid for war risk insurance, and they think it only covers military damage done by the enemy. But it covers damage accidentally done by our army, too, doesn't it, Senator? You are absolutely right, Miss Greenwood. And Hanson was very happy. Oh, uh, Miss Barton, if you'd care to come back, after all, I did promise to keep you at least two weeks. Thank you, Senator, but... But I... I guess I'm not quite ready for that kind well, of job. Well, think it over, and if you change your mind, uh, I have to be running along. Friends waiting for me in the car. Uh, good night, Miss Greenwood. Good night, uh, Senator. Miss Barton. Good night. Oh, and Charlotte, I've been such a conceited little upstart. Oh, now, a little conceit never hurt anyone. And an upstart has to start up sometime. <laughs> but I just don't know anything. Well, darling, you're really beginning to know when you know how much you don't know. And Charlotte... Yes, Jack. How do you find the area of a parallel of Piper Don? <laughs> no, here's where I start proving how much I don't know. <laughs> Charlotte Greenwood will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, I want to remind you again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send... The very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now, Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, ask any serviceman who's been overseas, and he'll tell you that to the men and women over there, mail call means more than mess call. He'll tell you that even a little note or a card from you is the next best thing to being home with you. What an easy thing it is for us to do in comparison to what they do. So let's send those cheering messages often. They can spare many a heartache because they show we care. And now, until next Sunday, at the very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying... by Jack Hasty and Don Johnson with John Brown, Charles Cantor, and Edward Ryan who appears in the courtesy of 20th Century Fox came to you from Hollywood. This is Wendell Niles speaking. This is the Blue Network of the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>